So you have Sayu, but you don't know how to use her. You try to make her a slow support, only to discover that she's unable to group enemies and doesn't even trigger swirl on every hit. To put that into perspective, if you really want a good swirl support, then use Kazuha. Oh, you don't have Kazuha? Then use Venti. Oh, you don't have Venti either? Then just use Sucrose. What? You missed all the Sucrose raid ups? Then just use Gene. Hmm? You're an F2P player who has never rolled out any banners? Then just use Animal MC. All of the characters I just mentioned have the ability to group enemies together. In fact, enemy grouping is considered a staple of animal support. Aside from Sayu, the only other animal character who can't gather enemies is Xiao, who's a main DPS. Wait, so that means Sayu is also meant to be a main DPS? First, I will show the optimal DPS build, talk about how to use Sayu and possible team comps. Then later in the video, I'll go into detail on why I think this is the best build for Sayu. Yes, I will explain why EM is a scam. The DPS build that I recommend is a standard animal damage build of 2-piece Veridis and Verner plus 2-piece Gladiator. And of course you can replace the Gladiator with a new artifact set that provides the same 2-piece bonus for the same result. For main stats, I went with the usual attack, animal damage, and crit rate or damage. In fact, if you have artifacts for Xiao already, you can directly put those on Sayu. Except for maybe replace the crit damage with crit rate. For weapon, the best 5 star is the Wolf's Gravestone, the best 4 star is the Serpent Spine, and if you're F2P, I guess you can use the prototype archaic. Although, depending on your artifacts, if you're missing a lot of crit rate, Serpent Spine might actually be better than the Wolf's Gravestone in certain situations, so if you have both weapons, you should test them both to see which one's better. Since we are going full animal damage, talent priority is skill, then burst, then normal. For constellations, C0 is usable, C2 is a sweet spot, and C5 for maximum damage. But going from C0 to C2 is way more of a damage increase than C2 to C5. The build I have now is a level 90 C5 Sayu with refinement 1 Wolf's Gravestone and talent 51311. You can see I really went ham on the elemental skill level, which is where the majority of her damage comes from. But does that mean you should just spam her skill? Yes and no. Sayu's skill has two different triggers, press or hold. Like a lot of other characters, holding the skill does more damage, but the downside is that it has a longer cooldown. Or does it? If we look at the talent description, it says the cooldown is 6 to 11 seconds. Okay, that doesn't tell us much. So let's do a test. If I just press, then the cooldown is 6 seconds. Okay, that's to be expected. If I hold and let her roll for the maximum of 10 seconds, then the cooldown is the maximum of 11 seconds. That's also to be expected. But now, what if I hold and then immediately press E again to exit out of her roll? Then the cooldown is just over 6 seconds? This implies that if you can press E at the moment Sayu enters her roll, you can deal the damage of the hold but only get charged the cooldown of the press. Moreover, pressing only produces 2 energy particles, but holding produces is one particle every three seconds in the rolling state plus two energy particles from the kick at the end. This means if you use the hold and immediately press strategy, it will give you three particles instead of the two you normally get from pressing. This might seem like the perfect method to use Sayu, but it's only good against weaker enemies. If you're up against bosses, it's better to actually hold and use up the entire 10 seconds in the rolling phase, especially if you have C2, which will boost your final kick damage by 66%. Using the 10 second roll also is a lot more flexible as you can do damage while waiting for other characters cooldowns to expire. So for bosses, you should hold and roll for the maximum time. Then switch to other supporting characters until the cooldown has expired, then repeat. Since Sayu's burst doesn't do as much damage as her skill, if it's charged then just use it right before the next time you are about to use her skill. As for possible team comps, while staying in Sayu's rolling state, she cannot dodge, but she's able to get hit, so it's crucial to have a shield character, like Zhongli or Diona even. Characters that can damage off field are also good, such as Xiangling, Albedo, or even Raiden. Some characters that have normal attack trigger damage off field like Chincho or Beto will not work with Sayu as we don't do normal attacks. The elemental absorption priority is Pyro, then Hydro, then Electro, then Cryo. So this means that she often has a hard time destroying Pyro shields. So it's sometimes a good idea to bring someone who can break shields for her. Now I will explain my rationale behind all the choices I made for my build. First, let's address why an AM swirl damage build on Sayu is just the worst idea. Before talking about Sayu though, we have to first understand understand why the other animal characters like Kasaha and Sucrose deal so much damage with an EM build. The swirl reaction happens in two phases. In the first phase, animal damage hits an enemy with an elemental aura, and an extra 
extra soil damage is produced. This is the phase one reaction damage. In the second phase, the non-animal element is spread to other nearby enemies, and if they have another elemental aura, it will react the swirled element with the aura for another round of damage. This is the phase two reaction damage. The phase one reaction damage is always a swirl reaction damage, which ranks among the weakest of the reaction damages. But the phase two reaction damage can be any reaction damage, including the high damage reactions such as overload, melt, or vaporize. Plus, if there are multiple enemies close to each other, phase two reaction damage can be triggered as many times as there are enemies. So it's obvious that phase two damage is always way higher than phase one damage. But the thing to realize here is that phase two damage requires multiple enemies to be close to each other, which is really easy to achieve with Sucrose or Kazuha who has the ability to group enemies together. Yes, we are back to this problem. So it's extremely rare that Sayu even has the chance to produce a second phase reaction, but that's not even the only flaw with Swirl Sayu. Unlike Kazuha or Sucrose who are able to trigger Swirl reactions on every hit, Rolling Sayu is limited by the default eternal cooldown of a 3 hit hit counter plus 2.5 seconds time counter, which you will understand if you watch my internal cooldowns video, but basically it means that Sayu is only able to trigger Swirl 8 times out of the 19 hits in a full 10 second skill hold. These two flaws together means that in EM Swirl damage Sayu is not at all feasible, so I would strongly recommend against such a build, but as ignorant as I was, I did actually try to build this. I had 1300 elemental mastery, I got the rain slasher for the EM substat, I had a decked out 4 piece very distant to boost swirl damage by 60% and shred resistance by 40% and I even brought her to level 90. I don't usually do that to my characters but I had her at level 90 and in the end the results are... Eh, so don't build the EM. For the weapon, I didn't choose the Sacrificial Greatsword since its passive doesn't trigger from Sayu's rolling damage. It only triggers from the final kick. If it were able to trigger on the roll damage though, it would basically always trigger and greatly increase the effectiveness of the hold and immediately press tactic since that counts as both a roll damage and a kick damage. It might even make her feasible as a swirl support. Next, I'll explain why I focus on Sayu's skill instead of her burst or her normal attack. The obvious reason is that her skill has the highest multiplier and her c2 boosts her skills final kick damage by 66 percent let's do some quick maths sayu's roll hits at most 20 times so c2 sayu's total consolidated multiplier for a full duration skill at talon level 10 is about 2400 percent to put that into perspective the similarly sized cleese burst only has a consolidated multiplier of 1450 percent obviously cleese still does more damage since she has a 50 percent higher base attack and is able to melt and vaporize to boost her damage. Overall, Sayu's entire kit suggests that she should be a good support character, but due to the fundamental flaw of not being able to group enemies, her usefulness as a support decreases drastically to the point that I would rather use Animal MC. This weakness and her abnormally high multiplier of a skill ultimately results in Sayu having the sole niche of being an animal DPS. But however, I do have to give credit where credit is due. She is very fun to play, since you can actually actively control where she's rolling, contrasting the press Q and then go AFK gameplay from a lot of the other animal characters. And to answer the question nobody asked, can Sayu Dragon Strike? Yes, yes she can. Other than that, I'll see you next time.